Hello everybody, welcome back to The Cabin, welcome back to Commonwealth Flipper. If you watch this show a lot, you know I don't like to give advice necessarily on things because I think everybody's situation is a little different. But I think this applies to quite a few folks out there and I want to talk about it because it's really, really changed my attitude. If you watch videos from months ago, you could tell I was struggling with a little bit of kind of being overwhelmed and not getting the results I wanted from things. And I decided to make a whole bunch of changes and I am absolutely loving these changes right now. There's still a little bit of up and down here and there, but let me tell you, I'm really happy with the direction of my reselling business because of a few things that I've done. And I want to talk about them today. We've got some good sales as well. Let's go take a look. Some of you who have been watching at least since last September know that we did a complete overhaul of our inventory here. And that was kind of step one in this process. I pulled this one out yesterday. My, there it is over there on the other side. This hat right here, it sold and then the person canceled the order and then a few days later it sold again. Green Bay Super Bowl hat. And that's an old, new old stock one right there. It's not perfect. But it's in okay condition. Pick this up for a dollar down in Florida. And it sold now for a second time, $34.95 plus shipping. I am going to attempt to talk about this today while I'm picking a few orders and kind of go step by step. And if you've watched the show, most of this isn't new to you, but I'm going to put it all together and tie it and put a bow on it. I dug these lacrosse boots, these rubber boots out of that bin. I'm going to use them as an example. I'm not going to kind of go out of turn here. I want to talk about a couple things first, but you know me and selling shoes and all that stuff. I'm not a huge fan, but even with this new system I have, and I've got a rule for shoes that really help me, I'm pretty happy when I make sales because they're usually for a lot more than like $9 plus shipping, which is what I used to sell some shoes for, which was dumb in my opinion. So these sold for $40 shipping so back last september actually it was before that i was feeling like i was a little overwhelmed i felt like this place was jammed full of stuff and stuff was selling we were doing okay but it wasn't where i wanted it to be and so i decided i was going to completely gut my entire store we delisted everything almost everything we left 100 or so listings up and i did that for multiple reasons one i wanted to go through with a fine tooth comb every single item before i relisted that item i wanted to check the comps again this is not something i'd suggest people do often because it takes a lot of time but it was something we needed to do i had never done this for my store and we went through and we took out tons of items and well not tons i mean we took out 150 200 items and we did a few things with it i'm going to talk about them throughout the rest of this video but i'll start with this our goal was to increase our asp and especially to get rid of items under that average sales price of, well, the average sales price has gone up 40% since we've done this, which is really awesome. Makes me happy when we make a sale because most of the time they're good sales that return more money than those smaller dollar item things. But I still like selling smaller dollar, dollar item things. You guys know that and I'll talk about that throughout the video. I was pretty specific in saying, hey, you know, I don't mind small dollar item sales, but they have to meet certain criteria one of those criteria could be a multi-quantity item in which case i don't really care if i've got a hundred or something and i'm making four bucks a piece on it and they're easy to ship and it's one listing go for it sold a couple of allison chains cassettes and i think this sales price total for both of these was like 33 dollars and 25 cents plus shipping for two allison chains cassettes let me see if i can see the names of these facelift and dirt i love selling cassettes but you know you can't go in there and list 500 of them if 400 of them have a low sell-through rate and a low average sales price these however don't let me double check my numbers really quick allison changed 33 dollars 15 cents plus shipping and these are not sealed pretty cool now if you remember 15 dollars and above was really that number we were looking for but i do have some exceptions things that i really really like to sell or like tupperware it's kind of synonymous with me and i still pick up those things but here's some other criteria right here i absolutely hate selling shoes so right now i'm not going to pick up a pair of shoes unless i'm going to make some good money on them so i don't even remember what the number is i think it's 50 bucks and i have picked up very very few shoes 
since I implemented that rule and we've slowly sold off what we have. Now, these right here at $40, they're not 50, but you know, I'm, I'm going to make some exceptions from time to time. You come across something like this and it's, you know, five bucks. I'm going to grab it if it doesn't need cleaning. You know, labor is part of this decision as well. And so even at the $15 limit or level, I'm not going to put in 15 minutes to clean something to get $15 out of it. So all that stuff comes into play. But at least I have this level. I'm not going to sell it unless it's $15 and above, unless it meets one of these four criteria. And one of them, which I absolutely love, is that multi-quantity listing. Now we did leave some items in the store in September that didn't meet that criteria, but they were already listed and they had views and stuff like that. And we just reduced the price because they were already listed. This is not one of those items. This is a Sahara windbreaker from Florida State, 1993. That one we got super cheap. Shout out Mike. And it sold for $26.95 plus shipping. But we did leave those in there with a future plan and that stuff is starting to now roll in with those items that were listed before and that we just kept in the store and didn't even delist. Which is once they've been in the store for 250 days, they're going on clearance and our clearance is going to be 30%. I don't really want to drop under 30% to be perfectly honest with you. It seems like eh, if it can't sell for under that, then maybe we shouldn't have picked it up to begin with. And that is an unintended consequence. Well, maybe it was intended that I really love about what we're doing now. So now that we are trying to get the back end of this thing straight, which is that other shed and the incoming and the listing all organized in the way that matches what we did in September, we're starting to implement this side, this shed strategy, which is putting those things on sale for 30% off and then delisting things completely. And then I'll talk about what we're going to do with those that are delisted out of the store if they just don't sell in 365 days. So here we go. These are some Harley leather pants. They're a very small size, I believe. We bundled them up together to sell them because the sell-through rate wasn't great. So we figured we'd discount them a little bit, put them in a bundle of two, and lo and behold, they sold $59.95 plus shipping. So I've always paid attention to sell-through rate, but I've never paid this much attention to sell-through rate because when I was doing this 20 years ago, it wasn't that big of a deal. 15, 10, 5 years ago, it wasn't that big of a deal. Stuff would sell if you find the right price point, but it seems like it's not that way anymore. So I decided to make these changes, and I'm super happy with it. And as an added benefit, our sale, our ASP obviously is going up, but our profits are going up compared to the time we're taking on items and we're taking this all into account. And I wrote all this down on a piece of paper. And I, well, not just on a piece of paper, but I wrote it all down so I could make sure that I was following my own rules. And I really, really like it. And I'll go back to the unintended consequence that really is a, an intended consequence. It's really controlled me out there picking. I don't come home with massive amounts of stuff. Occasionally I do, but if I do, it's the right stuff. And so I haven't been picking quite as much, but I'm making more money and I'm happier and I'm not overwhelmed either. And there's a couple pieces to the strategy that are really easier for me than it is for some people out there. But I do think that most people can implement it if this fits them. And some of what I'm saying might not fit you today, but I think... Most of us have come to these conclusions over the years, some of us sooner than me, of course, but I'm really happy with it. So speed enlisting has always been something that I've been aware of, but I've been writing things down. I gotta pick up a hat, but let me give you an example. So when I list video games, you know, here's a video game lot right here. I'm not gonna list these individually for three, four dollars a piece. I'm just not gonna do it. I'm gonna put them together in a lot and I'm gonna sell them at a discount because it's only one listing, it saves time. However, if I can get a 10, 12 dollar video game plus shipping, I'm gonna list it even though it doesn't match our 15 dollar limit, but I made categories like specifically, okay, I can buy a 10 dollar video game. I'll let myself do that. Or things that apply to different platforms that I can sell in bulk. Shoes don't apply to that at all. So if, and I take forever to, to list shoes, you know, I don't want to clean shoes. So my level is 50 bucks on shoes and everything else is 15. Well, not quite everything, but most everything. There's a few more little uh, categories that I give myself self leave on, but 
here's an example. Well, it's kind of an example. This hat right here. It's not a bad little hat. These actually go for pretty good money. And if I were to have cleaned this hat and made it look crispy and nice, this is probably a $25 hat. But it would have taken me 10, 15 minutes to do that process longer, really, with this hat, because I'm not that good at it. And so I'm like, you know what? Can I sell it for $15? And I'm like, yeah, I can sell it just like this for 15 bucks. And I did. I sold it for $15 plus shipping. But speaking of time, and there's been other steps in this process that I haven't talked about, but here's one that I'm about to do that are that's going to make the picking process quicker. I love my picking process. I know all you with skews and everything, you know, I, I get it. And you're probably right. But I pick very quickly. It doesn't take me long to find stuff. However, hats in this system, not only is it not the best way to store hats, it's a terrible way to pick. If my hat that I need is at the bottom of this bin, it's gonna. I have to pull this bin out here and take them all out and put them in a box or put them over here or lay them flat on the floor. Sometimes it takes me three minutes to find a hat. So there's something I just wrote down. I'm like, we're gonna fix this and we're going to, you'll see it in the future episodes, but we're gonna divide these up into probably sports. We'll do like a baseball hat. We'll do like a NASCAR hat, a football hat bin will have three different bins for them and then we'll have like you know designer type hats or, or non-athletic hats and we'll put those in a bin so we'll probably have four different bins which will make it way quicker plus it'll be better on the hats i wasn't going to do this but i figured it'd be a good time to talk about this real quick plus i had to bring this black light out here because when we take pictures of some of the glass we need a better black light for the pictures i'm gonna leave the heater on though so sorry for the noise and i haven't turned my tvs on and all that but i wanted to show you why it was so important why it is because we're not there yet why i want to get rid of so much stuff even stuff that has value on ebay very quickly because in the end the the sorting process when items come in this shed are going to help me follow my rules in the future and make things more efficient i'll give you a little bit of an example and this is we sold off a ton on Dibdit. A ton, we sold off like 14 different consoles and a bunch of different stuff on Dibdit the other day. And I still have probably 40 or 50 consoles. And I want to get rid of them all because I want to begin to sort things as they come in. I'll give you an example. We've started to do this already. So things that I don't want to sell off individually. That doesn't mean we're necessarily going to sell them on whatnot, but they don't meet our criteria or the work involved or the average, or excuse me, not average sale price, the sell-through rate isn't high enough to have them sit there forever we're bundling them up and we're going to use this space for the process of bundling things pre-bundling them so in other words if you get a bunch of here's an example that we're actually selling these on whatnot but you know this kind of stuff this is you know this isn't going to sell on ebay right as a single so what we're going to do is we're going to use this space here this space here for media and when I bring in things that aren't, don't meet our criteria, but they do as a bundle, whether that's on Whatnot, Dibdit, whether we're selling on Knickknacks, One Stop Shop, or whether we're selling on eBay, we're going to be able to sort them as they come in instead of trying to collect them from all over all the death piles. And once we get to the certain amount that we want to get to to make the margin good enough, we're going to list it. I know that may seem like a lot, but it really isn't if you have the space to start it from scratch. And that's what we're trying to do here by getting rid of all this stuff. And this is what I've done here. These are club head covers, for instance, that don't meet the requirement. If they're a $10 and above club head cover, we would list it if it's clean, if it has a good sell through rate, but we're not going to list it otherwise. And so we've got that same thing here with hats. And we're going to this stuff we need to clear out but this is old cassette stuff so we're getting there but we're starting the process here clothes are coming in here and what that's what we're going to do here so we go through here and find all the things that are similar sizes that aren't good enough to list on ebay put them together and sell them on who knows what platform some of them we've been selling on ebay some of them we've been selling on whatnot you know speaking of cassettes We've got tomorrow, you'll see a cassette lot that we sold together because none of them were $10, 12 $15 and above cassettes. They were $8 cassettes. So we just put them all together. We're going to get a pretty decent amount of money for them and they're not going to be clogging up the system. We're even using this right here for jewelry. When you come across a buy and you're able to buy a ton of jewelry, but sometimes they don't all go well together to get the best bang for your buck, divide them up. Necklaces, keychains um brooches bracelets and then you sell a big lot of those 
but at the same time we're pulling out items that are definite eBay items. So just like inside there's a spot for everything, there's going to be a spot for everything in here. We're not just going to bring in a bin of stuff we bought at a garage sale and put the bin in here anymore. Although we still have some, some of those, the remnants up here. And so we've still got to get through all that up there. But I think if we have this set, we can get through some of that and sort it out instead of selling it all off. And same thing with the consoles, but you get the point. But you know, camera stuff is down there, for instance. So you pull out the stuff you're gonna list on eBay that meet the requirement. If it doesn't, we bundle it all together and sell it all off together. Media is down here. Tupperware is over here. We've got more media down here. And that's how the system is hopefully gonna work. And of course, we've got a plush up there and some other things for now, but it's gonna be like three or four plush toys and a couple other things. Now the naysayers will say, you know, there's, well, there's probably two reasons people will say this won't work for them. And that's why I said this may not work for everybody. I think the two reasons most people will give is, I don't have that space, you know, I don't have two sheds or I don't have an eBay cave or whatever. And I'm pretty sympathetic to that argument. The other argument is, you know, it's hard to sell on whatnot for some people or to sell on, on Dibdit or whatever. And I'm fairly sympathetic to that as well. I'm very fortunate that I have an audience that I can sell fairly quickly and, and recuperate money from big buyouts or even make money. So I get that argument. However, if I were not to have those platforms, and I seriously consider not having those platforms up till even a month ago, but it just makes it so much easier. I would have still employed this method in two ways. One, I would still sell, hold on. Boy, this dog is persistent lately. I think they're getting tired of you. Are y'all getting tired of Wallen? Should I lock him inside? Huh, should I? But back to what I was saying, I would still be employing these things. I like it so much that if I were to never sell live again, you know, sell on whatever live platform there is, I would still be using this platform. It would change things a little bit. It would be things bundled up to sell exclusively on eBay through auctions probably and not necessarily take a loss on them, but not make much money on them. You're buying things in bulk, cherry picking the ones you really want to sell and not spending hours and hours and hours listing things that have slow sell through rates with low average sale price. So, you know, maybe it's the right plan for some folks to do that. And I did it for years because time and because of what I could source, and now I have more time to source, so I'm able to do that. But for those of you who say you can't do that because you can't sell on whatnot, like I said, I do feel sympathetic to that, but there are ways around it. And if you do this, it really will. If you have the discipline, it'll change the way you pick, and you won't have those items sitting in your death pile that you just don't want to list. If you watch my show four years ago, you'd see, see me selling tons of vacuum cleaner parts and making good money at it. It just wasn't making me happy and it was a lot of work. The when in doubt parted out on all of the different appliances and we still do a few because they meet the requirement. But in order to make money, sometimes you gotta sell those very low sell through rate items that don't sell very quickly and they're selling for seven, eight dollars plus shipping. And so those aren't meeting my requirement. So I'm not picking those things up near as much as I used to. I still will from time to time or what I'll do is I'll pick them up We've talked about it with the ab, ab lounge before and I do what's called the skinny strip now. You all right there? <laughs> Which is I take the two most valuable parts off of it and list them and I don't list the items that have low sell through rates and low ASP. You make slightly less money but you have way more time and a little bit more space as well. And you can use that time and the space to make you more money in more efficient ways. That's not the right shirt. You could use that to list better items, which is cool, or even maybe possibly source better, or to cross list, which is what this one was here. Shout out list perfectly, code Commonwealth. This is a Petra size small page, 50 cents for this. And this is a multi quantity item, so I don't mind selling it for $15 plus shipping. I think it's plus shipping, yeah it is. And I'm happy with that because I had like six or eight of these. And this one sold over on Mercari. We have finally got back to listing over there. If you've been following us, we have, since September really, have not really put cross-listing at the top of our list until we got everything straight. Now we're getting everything straight, so we've slowly started to ramp up our Mercari cross-listing, and we hope to have a huge amount of this stuff over there because it's in the stream. It's in the process 
of listing and we're going to do it immediately and just at the very beginning stages we're getting sales on mercari pretty regularly so another one of the nike dry fit shirts these just keep selling like crazy we are already in the pure profits took a huge bin of them in there this is a size medium i believe 19 dollars 95 cents plus shipping it's really allowed me to focus on those items that are you know digging through all the stuff i've bought find those items that are going to give you the biggest bang for your buck and do it quickly and figure out ways to sell the other stuff and make a little bit of money but get them in and get them out and i say all that and then i pull out a ten dollar tupperware butter dish that doesn't meet the requirement but it does because i made an exception for myself with tupperware and i did it specifically so it wouldn't allow me to do it with other stuff but with tupperware as long as it doesn't need any cleaning and we can just snap a picture and list it really quick. I'll do $10 plus shipping. This one went out on a 5% offer. I imagine it went to a viewer even though there's no message. But I'll thank Tammy. $9.45 plus shipping. Here is an example of the system working. So this is one of those items that we left on. We didn't take off the store because it was already listed. It was listed for $20 free shipping. We decided to leave it on. But once it hit 250 days on the site, which there was days on the site before... We did all the delisting, but since this one didn't get delisted, this one hasn't been on that long. So it was 20 bucks, free shipping. And it hit 250 days, so it hit our 30% off sale, and it sold at $14 free shipping. Which isn't amazing, but at least it sold, and at least we're making some money on it, as opposed to cutting bait completely on it too early. So let's just say it didn't sell. Once we got to 365 days on the site, I would have taken it off completely. And what we would have done is put it out there in the system we're creating and bundled it together with four or five dress shirts of the same size and sold them all off and made our money back, or at least some of it. And let's face it, some of that stuff will actually inform you of what maybe not to buy next time. You know, markets change on things too. I don't know what brand that is, but they definitely change. And sometimes you got to process that. And if you get a lot of the same type of items that get past 365 days and wouldn't sell at 70% of what you originally listed it for, maybe we shouldn't be picking them up. Let me look over here. This is an NRA jacket. So for $20 plus shipping, it's kind of giveaway like for members or whatever. And they don't go for big bucks. But if I can get them for two, three dollars, they'll usually sell. This is an XL, 20 bucks plus shipping. Here is an absolutely great example. This was, I believe this was sitting on a table. This was at a yard sale two and a half years ago. And it was there for a quarter or something. Or in a free box. I can't remember. But it was like, how could I leave it behind, right? And it's, I'm Candy the Cat. And I shouldn't have bought it or picked it up for free even. But I did. And so I left this one on. When we, we did the rest of the store, we lowered the price. And it still didn't sell. And then I mentioned it here the other day on the show. Because I really wanted this to sell. And it sold to a viewer, which we had very few viewer sales today. Just a couple. But this is one that makes me happy. It sold for $5.95 plus shipping. Which doesn't meet our requirement. Which means I would not pick it up today. But I am happy that somebody has it. I think I mentioned that on... On the Trash to Cash podcast the other day. That's probably why it sold. Hey, Kevin, here's a, another fake sale for you. We didn't have too many fake sales today. They were all real. There's a couple that may be viewers, but I don't think I've read any other comments in there. So, Anyway, ran across the reseller content on YouTube this year, and you're one of my favorite content creators. I saw this little guy on a video tonight and remember having similar toys as a child. Thank you for your entertaining and informative content. Alan, thank you for the... Very kind comment, and now you have the story behind it. So hopefully I won't pick up those kind of things, unless they're multi-quantity, or you can buy like 30 of them. And you buy 30 of them and sell them off in lots of five or six or something like that. So there are definitely things that I can not break my rules. They still meet my criteria. I wrote all that stuff down. Hey, that reminds me, if you guys have any hard and fast rules for when you're out picking for your systems that work for you, that some of mine might not apply to some of you. Some of you will be like, I don't pick it up unless it's a hundred bucks. And I hear people, look, if you only have like 10 hours a week or five hours a week to resell, that's a great strategy, right? So tell me your strategies below. Speaking of an item with a story behind it, this one's got a story behind it. We did a charity auction in the uh, trailer, if you remember up at the Cincinnati reseller rally, and it was for St. Jude. A bunch of folks donated stuff and we got all of it done and out to everybody and auctioned off but this 
box right here came from John flipping ain't easy. I could not find it. Absolutely could not find it anywhere. Somehow it got delivered and then put in the back of that shed over there. I think I thought it was something else or somebody moved it. And so we sold this stuff anyways on the auction. It's a baseball cube to, to frame a baseball, an autographed baseball or something. And there's a whole box of them. And we sold it at the auction thinking I would find it when I came back to the house. Never could find it. Absolutely couldn't find it. And I'm like, oh, geez. So what I did was I refunded the person who bought it at the auction. I gave them all their money back. And then I gave that amount of money to St. Jude myself. I, I just felt terrible for it. And John, I found it at the back of that shed when I was putting all that glass in there that I bought. <laughs> Jeez. So I'm like, ah, what am I going to do with it now? We already gave the donation off and I'm like, well, we'll sell them. $7.95 plus shipping. And it's probably fairly cheap for these, to be honest with you. But it is multi-quantity. And so it was, you know, one listing. Sell something, I don't know how many are there, 15 or so. And so it didn't meet the requirement, but it did meet the requirement because it's multi-quantity listing. All right, y'all, we're going to make more people mad with this joke here today. But you're blonde. You're not as blonde as you used to be. Your mom is blonde, so go ahead and tell a blonde joke. How does a blonde's brain get to, get to the size of a pea? How does a blonde's brain get to the size of a pea? I don't know how. It swells up. <laughs> Oh my goodness. Losing more subscribers by the minute. Thank you, Turner. Bye. I want to mention two things really quick. One is we are continuing those auctions on Dib Dip Mulligan's Golf Shop, whatnot on the 20th. I think you'll, yeah, you'll see this before then, I believe. And then what else we got? Oh, we got one on eBay as well. So you can just search out Commonwealth Picker. We're doing the Titleist hats from Isaiah House on a couple of them. ET pins over there on Dib Dip and what are we doing oh the first edition mug on ebay all that money is going to help raise money for a van for mary who works with isaiah 117 she's amazing so we mentioned that there is a gofundme link below if you want to contribute second thing is speaking of dibbed it is those video game consoles out there and the ton in there i'm going to continue to sell those off i want to have a massive show and give you know shipping discounts throughout the whole thing we did it a little bit we sold like 12 13 of them off something like that or 15 but i want to have a show with tons of consoles tons of controllers all kinds of stuff that's all video game related and just keep that show going maybe do two in two days and ship them all together that's the one benefit over there on district for sure compared to whatnot and i think both have their pluses but you can ship mass i'm like, ship massive boxes over there where you're restricted in most cases over on eBay, over on whatnot, and they upcharge you like crazy. And if you're doing like a Mac shipping over there, it's just way harder to be able to control the price of shipping. And so I'm doing these big consoles and these big bundles where people are buying six, eight, ten things, and I'm doing it over on Dibbed It. I'll announce that, or you can see it on Instagram. But we're going to be selling all that stuff off. Just $2 starts on consoles. Just sell it, sell it, sell it. I don't care what it sells for. Going to get it out because the system we're putting in place is going to make us more money in the long run. I also promised an update on Dibbed It from time to time and let you know. I just want to be transparent about it, how it's going. I'm going to give you the numbers, maybe in the next episode, maybe the one after that. How much is sold so far year to date? All the numbers, how many sellers, how many people were approving. I'll just give you a little tidbit right here. The most growth over there is being seen on the live selling and the static sales, the buy it nows are just kind of trickling in from time to time. And the growth is there. It's just slowly growing. Like I said, on Knickknacks, it's growing rather large very quickly and they're having tons of sales. That's why I'm going to sell glass on Jocelyn's in May. And so I love the trajectory of this. It may not be growing quite as fast as I wanted to or expected it to, but it is growing and certain little niches and places over there are doing better than others in certain techniques. I'm going to give you the numbers in an upcoming episode. All right, Reagan, the number twos have been flying out of here, but now the number threes are yeah. starting to sell. So that's cool when we are down to just a few of the number twos. All right, what do you got? Troy got a number three, Bradley got a number three, a giant Animan, and a We Get Things Moving sticker. All right, and the giant Animan sticker. We still got a few of those left as well. Turner's behind me trying to make Reagan laugh. <laughs> Thank you, Reagan. Bye, and don't forget to get your sticker at commonwealthpicker.com.
I got to get a little bit of shipping done here today, but I want to say thank you as always for joining us. You guys are absolutely awesome to me. I really do appreciate it. The comments, subscribing, all the stuff y'all do, follow on all kinds of platforms. I really do appreciate it. And a lot of you protect me in the comments, which I really get a kick out of because, you know, a lot of what I say may not apply to everybody. And some of what I say may not be right. You know, but it, I'm just doing the best I can, and I just am so excited about the trajectory of where we're going here, and I feel so much better about it, too, that I just wanted to share some of those things. But I want you to share your experiences as well, because maybe your experiences match somebody else's a little bit better than mine. So we appreciate you stopping by, and I can't wait to see you next time. <laughs>